this video, I'm gonna give you all the reasons why you should not become an insurance agent. If you've stumbled across this video, it's probably because you're considering starting a new career or maybe starting an insurance agency. In this video, I'm gonna break down all the reasons why you shouldn't. Let's go. If this is your first time tuning in, my name is Nick Saka, and at the time of this recording, we have built an $18 million captive insurance agency. In just seven years, we have over 20 team members. We know a thing or two about good people that are a good fit for the insurance industry and becoming an insurance agent, as well as people that are not a good fit for the insurance industry. And so in this video, we'll give you 10 reasons why you should not become an insurance agent. But before we get started, do me a huge favor. If you get any value, go ahead and subscribe for all things insurance. Follow me on my social media platforms. And uh, if you would like to learn how to start and scale an insurance agency, just as I have, check the link in the caption. I just dropped a course on how you can do the same thing. All right, let's get started. The number one reason why you should not become an insurance agent is if you don't like sales or being compensated based on your performance, okay? A lot of uh, insurance agencies are paid based off of how many policies they're able to sell and retain and keep on the books. And if you don't like selling or if you don't like being compensated based on your performance, then being an insurance agent might not be for you. See, me as an agency owner, if my team isn't selling, it's gonna reflect on their paychecks. And, and so a lot of how I'm paid as an agency owner, I've created a compensation plan that spills over uh, onto my team of agents. And so uh, as a result, if you don't like sales, I don't think you should be an insurance agent. Number two is if you're not comfortable with talking to people. I know this sounds like common sense and how many industries involve talking to people? Like you have to be able to communicate. You've gotta be able to build relationships with people, uh, keep their attention, educate them on the boring industry of insurance. Um, let me, let's, let's be real. Insurance isn't the sexiest industry. So if you don't know how to communicate with people, if you're not comfortable with speaking to people, being an insurance agent probably isn't for you. I would even go as far as you need to be a good uh, storyteller. You need to be able to illustrate why people need certain coverages and why they may not need others. And so and that's number two is you need to be comfortable with talking to people. Number three is if you don't believe in insurance, it's kind of like if you don't believe in Coca-Cola, uh, you shouldn't go work for Coca-Cola. I mean, and that might not be the best example, but you kind of get it. Like you need to believe in insurance enough to be able to sell it to people, to be able to help people with their insurance needs. And so if you don't believe in it, you should probably go do something that you believe in. Now that doesn't mean you need to be uh, I was born to do this, you know, like, cause I wasn't born to do insurance. Like I didn't, I didn't grow up saying I wanted to be an insurance agent. However, I like insurance. I believe in it. I believe people need a certain amount of coverage. I've seen the consequences to not having enough coverage. And therefore I believe in it enough to be able to help people with this service. And so it kind of goes without saying that if you don't believe in something, you probably should go find something else to do. The fourth reason why you should not become an insurance agent is if you cannot pass a test, you have got to get licensed to become an insurance agent. And if you can't pass the property and casualty or life and health exam, you probably shouldn't uh, try to become an insurance agent. And the test isn't that hard. Um, I've dropped the content on how to pass the state exam. It's not that hard, but you'd be surprised how many people I've hired and take the test five, six, seven times and they're not able to pass it. And so um, this is probably the worst reason for not becoming an insurance agent because it's just your ability to pass a test, which just means you need to put in the work. You need to study your face off and be able to pass an exam. So if you can't pass the test, then you should not become an insurance agent. The fifth reason you should not become an insurance agent is if you don't have a strong work ethic. Isn't that the same for any industry? Like if you don't have a work ethic, I mean, you're not gonna make it in any industry. And so I guess it kind of goes to uh, back to the third reason is if, I think if you believe in something, you're gonna give a strong work ethic in it. And so I guess these two are slowly, uh, are uh, closely the same 
that you gotta believe in it and you need to have a strong work ethic because to be successful in anything, it's gonna take, what do they say, 10,000 hours or so. So make sure that uh, you have a strong work ethic. The sixth reason is if you can't handle rejection, if you can't handle rejection, boy, life's gonna be hard for you. <laughs> I say that because you're gonna get rejected. I mean, like my team, we quote hundreds of people a day. We dozens and dozens. Each of them are quoting a dozen people. And I mean, you're gonna get nine people that tell you, screw off. Uh, you're gonna get, you know, so many people. Like my top closers close at a 15 to 20% close ratio. So if they quote 100 people, that means that 85 to 90 people you know, 80 people are telling them, I'm not interested, hanging up, click, screw off, uh, so on and so forth. Let me call you back, let me think about it. You gotta be able to handle rejection if you want to be an insurance agent. So if you can't handle rejection, uh, you probably shouldn't be an insurance agent. The seventh reason why you shouldn't become an insurance agent is if you're not coachable. Being coachable is the number one thing that I look for in employees, in team members, in partners, honestly, in anything. Like you gotta be coachable. Just like being a, a an athlete or being on a team, if the coach is gonna give you uh, suggestions or give you advice on, on, on how to be better, uh, you gotta be able to take it in stride and implement that advice, implement those suggestions, implement the coaching, because God, if you're not coachable, it's gonna be hard for you to be great at anything that you do. If you are coachable, you'll probably make a great fit in the insurance industry and you'll make a ton of money. Number eight is, speaking of money, if you don't like making money, you probably shouldn't be in the insurance industry. You probably don't wanna be an insurance agent. I know this one's kind of a sarcastic one, but uh, there's a lot of money that you can make in the insurance industry, whether that's life insurance, whether that's property and casualty insurance, like you can make a lot of money at this. Will it be easy? No, but you can. The opportunity is, is unlimited, uncapped, if you are good at what you do. Number nine is if you're uncomfortable under pressure, you probably shouldn't be an insurance agent. Back to number one, it's you're gonna be compensated primarily based off of your performance. Now, the good news is that we sell a product that everybody needs by law if you're selling property and casualty. And so that should take some of the pressure off of you. But if you're not good under pressure, if you can't handle sales goals, if you can't handle coaching and criticism and, and ways to improve and you're not able to implement that, you're not gonna wanna be an insurance agent, you know? So I would just say that uh, you've got to learn to be comfortable being uncomfortable, especially if you've never been in this industry. And I would just say that, you know, pressure makes diamonds. I think anything with good income potential, anything that's worth doing is gonna take pressure. So you might as well just take pressure in stride, like learn to be uncomfortable, learn to how to handle pressure. This isn't a, I don't think insurance is a high pressure sales environment. It's not like a car dealership or selling cars or anything like that or timeshares. This industry is better in my opinion. You do need to learn how to handle a little amount of pressure. And the last reason, the 10th reason why you should not become an insurance agent is if you're not an ethical person. I like to tell my team that we're not making hamburgers. So if you screw up on someone's order, you didn't put pickles on there, it's like, cool, no worries, I'll go and make another hamburger. With insurance, I mean, if you don't set someone up with the right coverage, the right policy, you don't educate your customers on what it means to be properly protected and you don't explain something and they go on, they cause an accident. There's some serious consequences to you not doing your job. And so cutting corners, uh, if you uh, like to do shady things, you, you shouldn't be in this industry. You shouldn't be in a lot of industries, right? But if you're not an ethical person, I don't think selling insurance um, is gonna be uh, the right industry for you because people's livelihoods um, are at stake, you know, people's incomes are at stake. And I mean, just there's so much. And so it's a lot deeper than that. But if you're not an ethical person, you should not become an insurance agent. And so those are the 10 reasons why you should not become an insurance agent. If you stuck around this far, thank you so much for tuning in. If you got some value, go ahead and hit the like button, comment. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully you got some value. If you did, hit that like button, comment, subscribe. And if you like this one, I'm pretty sure you're gonna like this one or this one. Thank you guys for watching.